Welcome to Acra Beats on Fresh FM Radio London. My name is Rudy Page and I'm really pleased that we've got Kwame Yeboah as the first guest and he's going to launch this new program called Acra Beats on Fresh FM Radio London. Kwame, great to meet you. How are you doing? Great to meet you. I am well and just giving thanks and very happy and happy to be on the show. And, and thank you for uh, uh, supporting this particular new platform for our activities in Ghana. And of course, we're, we're work, working towards Ghana's anniversary next year, 65th anniversary. We actually have a program called Homeward Bound Ghana. So we so um, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with your support and, it, and our activities are also supported from Jenny Adede and, oh, um, cool. uh, and, uh, and Hugh Nati as well. They're, they're our local partners. So Kwame, tell us a bit about yourself, first of all, and your background. Um, I am, um, well, I don't know what to start from, but I'm gonna start from somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I was born in Ghana. Okay. Raised in Ghana and um, lived in Ghana till I was about, well, till between 17 and 20. Mm -hmm. Because I did a lot of, you know, back and forth between London, Denmark, and Accra mm -hmm. from when I was 17 till you know, 20, 21. I grew up in a very musical household. My dad is a musician, so mm -hmm. I heard music from when it was being played on vinyls or cassettes or the band rehearsing in the house. Mm -hmm. And the area I lived in, which is called Abekan La Paz, had majority of the guitar band high life bands all living in that area. So I grew up hearing all the bands mm -hmm. every day, every night, every morning, because the bands kind of lived together and they rehearsed every day yeah. before the war. Um Donko, Nana Ampedu, J. A. Adufu, Kofi Sami, um Visa Vis Litton, um Alajo, they were all very close. Mm -hmm. So uh, I grew up listening hearing all the highlight music and my dad had a big collection of um music from everywhere else. He lived in the UK for a little bit as well, so I got to hear a lot of music. And I grew up, I think everyone knows not a musician anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, we've listened to your latest single, and it, and it's great. T tell us a bit about a bit. A bit um, tell us a bit I, more about it. I think this is the most spiritual album I've ever worked on personally, mm. because I did a lot of meditation before each single session. This was all like done in ten days, and every day we'll go in with a fresh and empty mind. I had the titles. I had all the titles, I'm a very good friend and also um, someone who's pushed me and also made sure I'd made this album. His name is KKD. Mm -hmm. he, um, he was very instrumental in calling me every time, sending me inspirations mm -hmm. and, you know, pushing me in the right direction to make this album and said, you know what, just do it, just do it. it just do it. It has to be Ghana and it has to be you, just mm -hmm. your experiences. So this is one album that was more about my life experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I say that is the one where I give thanks to the almighty, to the universe, to God, to my ancestors for everything I have in me because I feel very blessed and I feel I had the right opportunity to be able to get heard mm -hmm. whichever way and wherever I went. And um, this record is very much spiritual. The whole album is quite spiritual because I, like I said earlier on, it was very much a stay at home, don't go nowhere, spend an hour just meditating, thinking about stuff, look at the title every day. So one title every day. So I said that for instance, it was I said that, and it was just about being grateful, thinking about being grateful. Walked to the studio without any music, music or noise, anything in my, in my head. Walking, just play frequencies every morning through the studio, the whole house. And then um, went in with a couple of guys and just recorded. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah, this is the result that came. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a it's a great and yeah. great uh, tune. Can you just remind us of the name of the single again? 
Acida. Acida. Yes. Acida. Excellent. So, so when should we expect the album? The album is meant to be out in March. Mm -hmm. um, everything is done, but I wanted to basically release a couple of singles before. It's, it's never done in, I don't know, a lot of jazz musicians release singles, but I didn't think about it because I don't see myself as just a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. I enjoy playing different kind of music and I enjoy playing music. Instrumental music is mm -hmm. something I'm very used to. Mm -hmm. And I'm also aware of how much um, it doesn't go as far from where I come from. <laughs> there, are, there aren't that many instrument jazz musicians or instrumental musicians that yeah. are known, you know. Mm -hmm. You only hear about the ones that sing more than the ones that play. Yeah, no, I know. Um, yeah, trying to just put the two together to also get heard the right way from the right places and not just have this one little community that listens to you. Um, I said that is the first one. Yeah. Excellent. So you've just produced Jimmy Cliff's latest single. Tell yes. us how that came about, because obviously he's a great Jamaican global icon. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, it was, I think that came from, yes, I know. Yeah. I work with an artist called Patrice from Germany. He is also half Sierra Leonean and half German. He's a mixed race guy. He's a very good artist. And um, he moved back to, he moved to Jamaica to collaborate with a producer called Clive, Clive, what's Clive's surname? I need to find his surname. I call him my brother Clive, my brother Clive. Yeah. But Clive, the old producer, he produced I Can See Clearly for Jimmy Cliff. Okay. And um, he was looking for some new ideas. You know, I mean, they had one track. I don't know if I'm supposed to mention the, you know, the title out because it's um, not released yet. Yeah, don't but give I, away any secrets you shouldn't. Exactly, yeah. It was a piano and voice track. Yeah. And they had tried a few different pianists and it didn't work. So as he was talking to Patrice about it, Patrice is like, oh, you want to try Kwame? Kwame plays with me. He plays every instrument. Mm -hmm. He can maybe try a vibe. So we had a conversation, not with Jimmy, but with Clive. Mm -hmm. uh, Clive was like, oh, you know what? I tried a few different things and Jimmy doesn't like it still. Mm -hmm. So do you want to have a go? Like, yeah, cool. Send me the track. So he sent me the vocal. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember how long it took, maybe a week or a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And I heard it and it was a little challenging because, you know, you just have one vocal <laughs> with nothing. <laughs> you have to come up with something. And I thought, um, after a couple of days, I found some things. I called him and said, Brother Clive, Big Brother Clive, I think I got something. I think I got something. Have a listen to this. And um, the next phone call was, hello, Kwame. <laughs> I'm like, hello. My name is Jimmy, Jimmy Cliff. How did you come about with this? <laughs> I'm like, oh, and I was a bit starstruck because you know I've heard Jimmy music from when I was <laughs> when I was little. So I'm like, oh, I'm happy you like it. I when I heard it, I thought about merging, you know, the old and the new together. You know, to find a way to uh, to bring out something that is from the old but also has a new flavor to it without losing the essence of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, when it, when he heard it, he thought that was the right thing. He couldn't come up with it, no one came up with it, but it was the right way to approach the song. Yeah. yeah. So um, they wanted me to do another track. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool, send me the track. And that was a full track. Mm -hmm. So he sent it to me. And um, I think we had a three-way phone call that time. And Clyde was like, you know what? This is just the best thing you ever heard. So I'm like, yeah. let's, let's, let's give it a go. It's like, um, I like it, but I'm gonna have to change a lot of stuff on it. Are they okay with it? Mm. And I was like, you know what, do your thing. Well, cool, so send me the stem. So they sent me the whole, mm. I mean, the whole track like, on Pro Tools for that mm. song. And um, I got in a studio, I have a studio in Ghana, and I got one of the guys that was my understudy at that time. His name is Mike Mills. And mm. um, he's a young guy, a young producer, doing very good in Ghana. And um, I got him in a studio with me to brainstorm with, with me, that he could record me while I'm playing different instrument. Mm -hmm. And he also could add some other new urge to it that I didn't have that, you know, the younger people were here. Mm -hmm. uh, did that, sent it over, and they were happy with that too. So I ended up producing, I don't know, seven or eight tracks oh, from no. that. Okay, okay. <laughs> but um, 
That's good. But but the first one they released is this one called Human Touch. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, he sent that to me. He's like, you know, I like this song, and it's called Human Touch. I mean, the whole album is more is about what's going on today. Yeah. You know, I like I, that was happening, and you know, this song talks about how he can talk to people on on apps and have mm-hmm. Zoom calls, but it's not the same as being there in person with the people. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I, I heard the track and I was like, wow, that's a great track. And for me, I thought it should have a bit of organ on it because it reminded me of Many Rivers to Cross at the same time, even though it doesn't have no mm-hmm. you know, resemblance mm-hmm. with, the, with the two tracks. Mm-hmm. So um, I called Lou Smith. I mean, I, I play keyboards too, mm-hmm. but I thought, you know what, I should get someone who can do something else I couldn't do or some flavor I couldn't do. Mm-hmm. Luke is a Jamaican. Um, guy as well, he's UK Jamaican, and he has something else that I thought he could add to it. And I was like, Brother Luke, I have this track from Jimmy. Can you please put something on? I think you do a great thing on it. I'm like, yes, yeah, send me the track. Send it to him. He did the organ. I'm like, that was just perfect. So yeah. sent it to me, put it together, replace the instrument, played a few different because I, I play drums, keyboards, guitars, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I did my thing on it, did some sound replacing, and then sent it back to Jimmy, and they were very happy about it. Yeah. And, uh, I ended up being on the phone with um, the mixing engineer, who is Jimmy Douglas, mm-hmm. who's um, an award-winning, Grammy award-winning mixing engineer. He did Jay-Z and all these other mm-hmm. big names. And uh, we also had a good conversation with that. And here is the results <laughs> of yeah. that. And, but, <laughs> yes. No, that, that's, yeah. that's great creative collaboration, you know, across yeah. the continents. Yes, it's Great, worked out. Caribbean, bit. UK, Ghana. Ghana, yes. Yeah. No, yes. Excellent, excellent. That's great to hear. But it, it's worked out because of my studio in Ghana as well, because I have the opportunity to be able to be in a bigger space and to, you know, how it's like the spaces in the UK that you can't really have like a big yeah. massive studio, you pay a lot of money for that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah um, that's what I mean. But anyway, I'm grateful for great. all this. No, that's great. So, you've worked with some great musicians like Craig Davis, Cat Stevens. And of course, you've mentioned uh, Jimmy Cliff. Yes. And many others. Could you tell us, particularly the work that you 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 do with Craig Davis, David, I should say, because of yes. course he's well known here in the UK. Yes. Um, Craig, I call my brother. I mean, I'm older than him, so he's like my little brother. But we, it's funny because my relationship with him doesn't it doesn't um have as much work with um relevance as just brotherhood and just doing what we love mm-hmm. um, i got called into the craig camp in 2001 i was then working with miss dynamite and um they were looking for a musician that could play keyboards and guitar mm-hmm. as good as each other because they had two albums one was very guitar dominated one was keyboard dominated and um, I got the call for it mm. and um, joined the team from that time. And it's just mm. been that till today. Okay. I, started, I was actually working with him yesterday. We okay. um, yeah, okay. we did some filming um, for a Christmas thing. And then all of a sudden we um, decided to do um, a little piano cover, mm. but it wasn't part of it. And we just filmed that yeah. <laughs> I, well, on the phone. And um, he put on his Instagram and it's just people that blew it up about it. But um, Craig is someone that I think musically and spiritually we connect a lot. Right. Each time we meet together, whether it's just clapping and singing together, mm-hmm. it's gels. Mm-hmm. I love his voice so much. And I think we complement each other musically. And um, it's been like that. He's family to me and um, mm-hmm. working with him, great experience. I've traveled the whole world with him. Mm-hmm. Did first world tour with him mm-hmm. 2000, so from 2001 till now I've been working with him as yeah. I joined us as, as a keyboard player guitar player and then became musical director afterwards um, yeah. part of it was also um, Frank Tonto who was a drummer and musical director at the, at the time and I learned a lot from Frank as well he is Ghanaian and he's the son of Mark Tonto from Osibisa okay, okay. yes um, heritage, the musical heritage. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I, I had to drop that in because um, yeah, of I appreciate Frank so much and he did, did a great job and I learned quite a bit from a lot from him yeah. as well. Talk, talking about great musicians, um, Kayo Brown. 
Yes. The great friend of Fresh FM Radio London. We play a lot of music. He does a lot of promo tracks for us as well. So, so you know Kayo. Tell us a bit I, more about I, Kayo. Oh, my God. I met Kayo maybe the very first year I arrived here in the UK because um, I knew a saxophone player called Ray Callis. Mm -hmm. Also introduced me to a lot of people. Ray took me under his wings and showed me around everywhere and took me everywhere to all the musicians. And he's very good friends with Kayo. So Kayo was one of the first people that I also worked with. And he actually dropped some good knowledge for me because um, he made me realize you can have a good academic life and also have a musical life, artistic life, and still work both together because he's very much mm -hmm. active in both yeah, that's right. Kayo's an amazing musician and he still stays true to the music. And the last thing I did with Kayo was, oh my God, Jimmy Cliff musical. <laughs> <laughs> How did they come? Yes, that was the last time I saw Kayo. Mm -hmm. And it was nice. We had a great conversation where he had a line like, jazz is a very unforgiving music because if you stop practicing mm -hmm. for three days or a week, you realize how <laughs> how bad you sound up to it. Yeah. And from that day, I was like, wow, that's so true here. Yeah. I still keep listening Practice to it. every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah, every day. Okay. I know Kayo, he's a good big brother as well and amazing musician. Great, great, great. And, and finally, uh, I mean, because I, I know you're busy. Um, what's the future for you? What What's next over the next couple of years? Um, over the next couple of years, I mean, I have just had, I mean, doing music under my name now. I did a lot of stuff because I always wanted to be the guy in the background. Right. Um, up until I got super bored in the lockdown <laughs> days. Um, I have two different projects. I have one band <laughs> yeah. and an electronic trio doing like just African music, but just electronic African music. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing. But I still do my work with um, Craig and Cat Stevens mm. and um, all the other little productions studio-wise that I do. But I'll be releasing a lot more music yeah. under my name and um, with the Bobby Band and my trio. Yes, and, yeah. and we certainly look forward to our version of your Ghana 65 celebration for next, next year. It's, it's we, coming. You know, we, we well, look forward to that. Give me a deadline and I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Absolutely. Our theme is Homeward Bound Ghana. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it fits in into the broader international decade for people of African descent. So we're really pleased that you, you are interested in that. You know, you I think you have the best um, titles or, or, or headings that I've actually ever heard. Like, oh, everything you've dropped so far has been just mind-blowing. <laughs> it's nice. It's great. nice. Great. Yeah. Thanks for that. And, in fact, we must mention Kwesi. Let's yes. talk a little bit about Kwesi, because obviously he, he's quite instrumental in getting your name out there as well. Yes. You know, Kwesi, I met Kwesi in 1999 or 98. Um, he was then working with Native Vibes, or he was doing something with Victor Vico, Vico Uncle Vico, Victor Mensa, who is a great guy that also helped me quite a lot mm -hmm. um, my, my early days in London. And um, after one rehearsal with an artist that Victor was producing and Kwesi was the manager or Kwesi was, a, was the executive producer called Musa, um, Kwesi gave me a lift home. I then lived in Edmonton and he played me this album by Aaron Neville. Aaron Neville, yes, called Warm Your Heart. And I was blown away with the string arrangements on it. I was like, oh my God, what's this? I need to hear this. And he lent me the CD for, for a few months. That's how our relationship started. Right. <laughs> and um, I did a few things for Crazy. And then he had a documentary in Ghana where he came to also interview me in my studio in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And we were then quite close. And um, we did um, a few, we did a, a show called Music from the Center of the Earth. Mm -hmm. from Ghana on, the, on YouTube. We did a few things for Pat Thomas and Kobana Kobana and a few other artists from Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, I sent this single to, I sent some music to him and said, oh, finally I'm doing this. Um, let's not forget, Kwesi always tried to also, mm -hmm. you know, 
ask me, what do you have Kwame? Can we send me something? Let's do this. But I always did stuff not under my name, but under, you know, under a band name, whether it's OBY, Obiabeya, or Pat Thomas and Kwashibo area, because Pat's had a bigger name than my name. So I'm like, you know what, uh, Uncle let's put Uncle Pat's in as the front man and all that stuff. Um, so um, I sing this stuff and I'm like, oh, you know what? Do you want to send this around? And maybe if you have, you know, your platform, people that can maybe promote it or help promote it, because, you know, I'm not going to any of this stuff. <laughs> and uh, he came back to me like, I really love it. I really love it. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm happy you like it. So let's just make it happen. Because I now have a, I have a UK band. I have a UK Kwame band who's very supportive with um, some great guys like Graham Blevins playing saxophone, um, Stephen, uh, St Stephen playing drums and Jeremiah playing, but these guys will fry all these guys and um, stay really supportive of things. So it's kind of boosted me a lot more to do more here and concentrate on doing this music. And obviously people like Craig and Katz, they all supporting me so much about the release that it makes it it makes it like it's a no-brainer not to go ahead with it. They both like, oh, do it. People was telling me, Kwame, I see you headlining Montreal Jazz Festival soon. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I thought, oh man, thanks, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely, we're going ahead with it. And Kwesi made it possible for you to have me on this Absolutely. program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. He's, we talk almost every other day or every day. Kwesi is free. He came to my first ever UK show as well, and I was even surprised. I didn't know he was in town. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, what are you doing here? Like, I had to come and support. Like, I didn't know you were in town. Like, yeah, I didn't say anything. I thought I was so proud. So, um, Quish is a good, a good friend, and he's mm -hmm. doing great things. So, um, where can people follow you on social media? How can you just tell us? Yes, I Instagram account is Kwame underscore underscore. Well, obviously, someone took the name before I got there, so I had to put double underscore <laughs> to really? get in. So my Instagram handle is Kwame underscore underscore Yeboa. Um, I'm on Spotify, Kwame Yeboa. And on um, I, Apple Music, Kwame Yeboa. And Facebook and Twitter is Kwame Official. Um, hopefully one day I'll have enough money to claim Kwame Yeboa back on everything. <laughs> but yes, these are handles on social media. Right. So thank you very much, Kwame, and look forward to <laughs> connecting with you again soon. Yes, thank you. And drop me those um those deadlines and I email. We will do. You'll get, them to, you'll get them today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Right. Cheers. Bye. Bless.